Morning, everyone. Uh, we thought uh, we will have a good uh, number of people to hear from the government, but unfortunately, we are... Uh, okay, that's fine. When it comes to doing business in Papua New Guinea, you don't run to politicians and come to us. Uh, we're the ones that will uh, facilitate your business interest in our country. So, uh, as my colleague has said, uh, he looks after our gates. Sometimes investors quickly go to the politicians and expect the government agencies to bend the rules, and we, some of us, we don't do this. So, let me remind us this morning that uh, we go by the rules and regulations that we are required to deliver for the country. This morning, I'm privileged to stand before you to uh, tell uh, the good and bad stories about ICCC, the journey we had in the last 20 years. All right, our presentation this morning will uh, tell you about who we are. For those new investors, we have never been given a stage to talk about uh, who we are, so this time at least you know who ICCC is, uh, at least and uh, what we do and uh, confining our discussion this morning, since we have 15 minutes to talk about the emergence and acquisition role we play and uh, what we do with the state-owned uh, industries in terms of uh, regulation uh, that we provide to the old government uh, uh, state-owned business. And then a bit of conclusion here. Uh, IEEC was established back in uh, 2002 as a result of the reform undertaken by the former or late uh, McCary, and that led to the establishment of the IEEC as the uh, principal economic regulator, and uh, IPBC as the shareholder of the government business and other establishments and reforms he has undertaken. So over this uh, uh, 20 years, IEEC uh, has uh, existed to do what the government has required for us to deliver for the country. Uh, through this process, we uh, repealed what used to be called Consumer Affairs Council. Those of you come from the old school. Uh, the price control uh, functions under the Price Control Act or Price Regulations Act, they've all been uh, repealed. Uh, those of you from uh, Papua New Guinea would be familiar that the price control that we always talk about has been repealed and we've given, been given the responsibility to price monitor. So these two pieces of legislation has been uh, repealed and replaced and the government at that time came up with what we call today the Independent Consumer Competition Act 2002 that was passed in Parliament at that time. Our key roles uh, is to enhance the welfare of our people uh, through the promotion of competition and fair trade. Uh, we also promote economic efficiency in industries and investment conducts. And uh, finally, as you all know, protect the consumer's interest uh, in relation to price and quality of goods and services. Coming back to uh, what uh, they want us to speak on, uh, how do we facilitate uh, market investment, uh, market efficiency to promote sustainable investment? Uh, I, what IEEC does is to facilitate uh, the government's uh, investment desires through our role in the mergers and acquisition. Uh, under the provisions of the IEEC Act, especially Section 81 and 82 of the IEEC Act. And I will talk also about our role in the industry regulation of uh, state-owned entities that how supports investors or investment in our economy. All right, mergers and acquisitions. I think those uh, of us in PNG not really familiar, but those uh, investors who seek to invest in PNG, uh, all mergers and acquisitions must go through the IEEC as required under Section 1 and 81 and 82 of the IEEC Act. If they meet the following uh, mandatory notification thresholds, and that is the tra transaction value exceed uh, the value of 50 million or above, or the proposed acquisition would result in a market share of about 50% or more. So if a potential investor that wish to acquire or buy shares or merge, and if they meet the two thresholds, they are by law required to come to the IEEC for consideration. 
There are two processes. One is called a clearance, and one is called the authorization. The clearance process is a test of competition in the market. The authorization also takes into the assessment of competition, but at the same time considers what are the likely pub uh, public benefits that will, as a result of this merger or our acquisition in the economy. A failure to comply with this will result in a penalty of 750,000. Some mergers and acquisition approvals to date in the uh, ACO or mining and petroleum the space. Some of the list that we have gone through the process a year for uh, one is Oil Search and Santos merger, Trafigura acquisition of control of Puma Energy, Geogas Pacific acquisition of Origin Energy, Kumul Petroleum Holding acquisition of interest in PNG LNG Santos, JX Nippon acquisition of uh, State and PNG LNG from Total, Numont, the recent acquisition of Newcrest. That's in the ACO industry. Some of our approvals for other markets in our economy. I can't read it from the air, but you can see the list. Some of the applications that we declined for competition recent. That's one, the Kina proposed acquisition of Westpac. Link PNG's proposed acquisition of sales in PNGA. And another one we approved with condition, the Geo Pacific acquired sales in Origin Energy. What do we need to know? If you are thinking of acquiring or merging or even buying some shares, then you should come to us. And the requirements are That's a strict requirement by law that any potential or even including those existing business in our economy must go through this process. That if you have met the threshold required under the IEEC Act for us to go through the clearance process or the authorization process. Our assessment process does not have any political influence, directions, or any public or business. I acknowledge my House Associate Commissioner, Mr. Edward Willett. We do not meet with potential applicants. We, do, we reserve our position as commissioners away from all discussions. So if any potential investor will wish to apply for anything, you will not have the benefit of meeting us because we, we stay away from engagement with our technical and staff. We maintain the impartiality and the distance so that a decision comes to us, we make impartial decision. We protect the market. If any investor wishes to come in that the investment will harm the market, we make sure that we protect it. The market remains competitive and the market remains vibrant. If there is any potential harm that will cost to the market itself, 
for example, the telecommunications market, the oil and gas market, any market. So this is our role to protect it, making sure that there is competition. And in the case of us denying one or two major proposed acquisitions or mergers, it's because of those reasons. So our process is very public. All stakeholders are required to participate. And those government departments and agencies in the room, you will always receive a, a letter from us telling you that, tell us what you think about this merger that we are trying to consider. So those of you who are familiar with our letters every day, please respond to us. Tell us about it in the economy. Because at the end of the day, we will not have a politician coming down and giving us direction to make that decision. It's us that will consider those through this process that will guide us to make those decisions. So those of us in the room, especially from our government agencies, if you see a letter coming from us, these are huge investment decisions. These are huge decisions that will impact our economy. So for all this process, it's strictly transparent and publicly consulted before a decision is made. So, so far, of all the decisions that we have delivered for and against, none have been challenged in court to date. Everyone tends to accept those decisions, and we are very pleased to uh, inform you that some of these decisions are publicly available on our website and readily available for you to read. So this is our process. The next slide that I would like to show you is about our role in regulating the SOEs. Uh, in the early days when the reform took place, the desire was to have ICCC take over the role in regulating these SOEs to make sure that we give the fair rate of return and the investment required in the industry by reflecting the right tariff or rates for this business so that we keep it. But over time, some have gone away. But what we do with the current one is what we do through what we call a regulatory contract. This is a binding document akin to what we call a tariff order or something like this. So this one locks into the regulated entity and the IEEC. So what, is that, what it does is takes, it looks at the entire business into the future for the next five or 10 years, taking on board the cost, uh, CAPEX, OPEX, all the investment decisions, we lock them into a, what we call a regulatory uh, period that is between the IEEC and PNT, or whatever the uh, SOE. So these are some of the things that are key, among others, is, uh, is a binding between the uh, uh, state-owned entity and the IEEC. So what is, it does is it gives that level of certainty to the uh, SOE that you are given that tariff because you are required to receive that amount of recovery over the next 12 months. So of those uh, five or six SOEs that we had at that time, uh, we were responsible for the telecommunications industry and we issued a number of licenses at that time to be mobile, telecom, Daltron, uh, the ISP space. So af after that, uh, if you recall, the introduction of Digicel into Papua New Guinea is as a result of us introducing a competition into the telephony market in 2006 that led to the entry of Digicel. Then immediately after this, after introducing the license to Digicel, our functions were transferred to Pengtel. So today we are not responsible for telecommunications, but we, we deal with consumer issues that's Alexis City, that's MVIL. Some of the good stories that you read about MVIL and uh, PNC ports, the background work is that every load taker is the IEEC. Conclusion, uh, the regulatory framework of government policies and guidelines should not act as a barrier to investment. Uh, competition law and regulatory tools are invoked mainly to take care of the firm behavior and market failures to encourage economic growth. Uh, governments often intervene when markets fail, but in the absence of a clear, defined competition policy and regulatory mechanisms, the intervention can be arbitrary, but to serve us to the interest rather than the poor. Hence the importance of IEEC in a PNG economy. IEEC role as the regulatory 
and competition watchdog is to make the market conducive for potential investors. Thank you very much. Thank you.